Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving math problems from, for GMAT out of this book here GMAT Study Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 70 or better yet page number 71 uh, 72 rather page number 72 beginning with number 67 very first problem that you see there the problem is already on the blackboard let's take a look at it if at the end of the video you find that this was helpful and if you decide that you would like to work with me that you would like to hire me as your tutor you can send me you can get hold of me by sending me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com Let's take a look at the very first problem on the page number 67 it says 181 is approximately what percentage greater than 79? The word here is approximate which means which means we are not looking for precise answer so let's do let's do approximate here. instead of 180 we're going to use one instead of 181 we're going to use 180 180 is approximately what percentage greater than instead of 79 we're going to use 80 and that makes it very straightforward all we have to understand is, uh, all we have to realize is that 180 is made up of the original 80, which is this guy right here, is made up of original 80 and 100 more, 100 more, which can be broken down into 80 and a 20. So this is 100%, this is 100% more than 80, and then 20 is 1 fourth of 80, uh, 1 fourth of 80, which is another 25%. So the answer is 180, 180 is. 125% greater than 80 and therefore 179 or 181 is approximately 125% greater than 79. Number 68. Number 68 says the graph for the graph for x times y equals to k where k is less than 0 k is less than 0 which is negative lies in which two quadrant quadrants very straightforward very simple problem so since this line this graph we're talking about this particular graph where k happens to be negative is a negative quantity. The only way the product is going to be negative of x coordinate and the y coordinate of a given point is when they are both negative, or sorry, the one is positive, the other one is negative, or when x is negative and y is positive. Let's take a look at it. As we go along here, x is positive, and as we move up, y is positive. As we go along here, x is negative, but as we're going up, the y is positive. Oh, there you go. That's the first one. That's where the product is going to be negative. That's the second quadrant. And as we go along here, x is negative, and as we go down, y is also negative. That's not going to work. As we move this way, the y is positive, and uh, x is positive, and y is negative. There you go. So it turns out in the second quadrant and in the fourth quadrant, the product of the x coordinate and the y coordinate of any given point that lies on this graph is going to be negative which means this graph is going to fall in those two quadrants. Number 69 N liters were added to a tank which was which was already one third full and it became seven ninth full as a result of having added as a result of having added n liters. The question simply is what is the capacity what is the capacity of this tank? Let's use, let's use letter C to represent the capacity. Let's use letter C to represent the capacity of the tank in, in liters in liters and we know there was already one third full to start out with. It was already one third full to which we added n liters. 
and as a result it became seven ninth full it became seven ninth full it became it reached seven ninth of its capacity this is a three this is a nine the very first thing we're going to do is multiply this this thing top and bottom by three it also becomes nine so here we have three ninth here we have seven ninth let's bring this let's bring this three ninth to other other side so n will become seven ninth and then this is three nine so bring it to the other side in other words, subtract this quantity from both sides. There we go. And n is equal to 7 minus 3 is 4. It's 4, 9, c. There's nothing to it. Do you understand? No tricks, nothing at all. Let's do the next one. Some of them go quite fast and some a little bit tricky. It's always like that. Well, for example, the very next one. For example, the very next one. So here, we are dealing with a parking lot. We are dealing with a parking lot. Okay. I'm not going to write the entire problem, I'm just going to explain to you. So here's my parking lot. And they must have described the shape of the parking lot somewhere in the problem, number 70. It's important that you, the book is in front of you because I obviously I'm not here to babysit, uh, babysit you. You have to read the problem yourself as I have said many many times. It says a smaller rectangular, a small rectangle in the picture above. So it is a rectangle. Let's draw it as a rectangle. So it's a small rectangle. This is our parking lot. original parking lot and then we decided that this parking lot is just too little not enough not enough space for everybody to park the cars comfortably we're going to expand the parking lot so that it has twice as much capacity the area of the parking lot is twice as much by adding w feet to it on in, in either direction we're going to add w feet to it in either direction originally it was 100 by 150 i left that out I left it out because I wasn't reading the whole thing. If you read the whole thing, it will it will tell you there. Oh, actually, it gives you a picture right above it. I wasn't looking at it. It gives you a picture 100 by 150. So the new area, the new area has to equal two times the old area because that's the whole idea. Two times the whole old area because we want to double the capacity. Okay, double the capacity not in terms of how many cars you park necessarily, but the square footage that's the idea the question simply is what is the w that's all it is what is the w so let's begin let's begin uh i shouldn't have drawn that bloody thing in the middle of the blackboard like that two times the old area old area is this 100 times 50. i'm going to erase it we don't need it now you have the book in front of you uh, two times the old one which is 100 times 150 and the new one the dimensions of the new one uh, it used to be this 100 by 150 I just I just erased it but I need it again there you go this is the new dimension so here one side is going to be 100 plus 100 plus W and the other side is going to be 150 plus W and that's all it is that's all it is Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's see what we can do here. We're going to work on it a little bit. We're going to work on it. So let's expand this thing. 100 times 100 times 150. Stay with me, okay? This gives you 100 times W. And this is going to give you 100. 150. I hope I'm not making a mistake here. 150 times W and finally W times W is W squared and on this side we simply have 2 times 100 times 150 let's see what we can do here the well, very first thing we can do here the very first thing we can do here is that we have 100 times 150 on this side and we have 2 times 100 times 150. 
So why don't we subtract this quantity from both sides? Let's subtract 100 times 150 from both sides. And if we do that, I'm going to do it on red ink so you can see it. If we subtract this quantity from both sides, this is going to disappear and this becomes the instead of instead of two of those, we only have one of those. Here we go. 100 W and, and two, two, 150 W and this is W squared. So W squared plus 250 W has to equal 100 times 150. The question is, what do we do next? Well, we have a couple of choices. I'm going to raise the thing we need. To, I'm going to start on the top. We have two choices actually at this point. As always, as always in any algebraic problem on this exam, we have two choices. We can either excuse me. We can either solve this problem algebraically in a classical way, in a traditional way, in an orthodox way, in a geeky way, in a nerdy way, like a goody two shoe, or we can try out something different. What we're gonna do here is because the answers are numerical, because the question is how much is W, the answers are numerical. We're just going to try out one of the five answer choices. And usually I like to start with C. I like to start right in the middle. I like, we're going to raise the thing so we have room. That's just what I like to do here. Let's start with C. If you look at the answer choices, the answer choice C is 75. C is 75. And the advantage of working with, with the middle is because Whenever the, whenever the answer choices are numerical, whenever they are numerical, they are not just arranged haphazardly, they are arranged systematically. Either in ascending order, they go up in value, or in descending order, they go down. It doesn't matter whether they are arranged in ascending order or descending order, they start with the middle, and middle will, if the middle works out, if you try C and C works out, you're done. If C does not work out, it will give you the directions, which way to go. Is it too small or too large? And once we know that, we can go that direction. Do you understand? Let's try that. So 75, I'm going to try it. We're going to pretend that W is 75. We're going to pretend that W is 75. So watch what happens. If we, if, if, we, if we use 75 for the W, oh, let's do one more thing here. The way it's written here, we're going to end up multiplying 75 by 75. I don't want to do that. Let's, let's simplify this thing as W plus 250, which makes life easier. Which makes life easier, okay? I'm going to pick up speed here. I'm explaining too much. So this is 75. And 250 plus 75 is 225. And the question is, does this equal does this equal this? That's the question here. Let's find out very quickly. Let's find out very quickly. Divide both sides by 25. This is going to become 4. This is going to become 3. Let's divide one more time by 25. This is going to become 6. And we I know 100 has 425, 200 has 825, therefore 225 must have 925. Is this true? Is this true? Is 27 is 27 equals to, equals to 24? Obviously not. This quantity is greater. This quantity is greater. In my notes, it's actually is 320, 325. Oh yes, this actually should have been 325, not 225. It was already 250. It, it was already 250. It was already 250. If you add 75 to it, which is what the C is, if you add another 75 to it, it becomes 325. It actually it actually makes us case even stronger. So instead of 9, we're going to have 4 more 25, we'll have 13. So that, that, actually makes our, uh, that actually makes our case even stronger because before, when I had 9, it was 27 versus 24. 27 was still greater than 24. I still, I wouldn't have made a mistake because this was still greater. I, I, I would have gotten lucky, but this is even, even, even more, I don't want to say more greater, that's not right. It's even greater of a quantity than before. The point here is, this quantity is bigger because W is too much, W is too large. That tells us the 75 is too large a value for W. W needs to be something smaller. Let's try B. Let's try B. B says, B says, W is equal to, what does B say? 50. Let's try 50 and see what happens. Let's try 50. Oh, I erased that part. So let's take out W common. W plus 250. This time I'm going to pay attention, I promise you. So this is 50 times 50 plus 250 is 300 versus 100 times 150. This is, goes very fast. Divide both sides by 100. This becomes 3. As you can see, 150 
equals 150. What do you know? There you go. We are done. 150. 50 times 3 is... There you go. Answer is, answer is B. Answer is B. That's all it is. Now, just to satisfy your curiosity, <coughs> just to satisfy your curiosity, I'm going to show you that had we tried A, had we tried A, it would have told us, had we tried A, it would have told us that the W needs to be larger. W is too small. Let me show it to you very quickly. In answer choice A, they claim that the W is 25. If we try 25, it's going to turn out that it is too small. It is too small. This quantity will, will end up being smaller than that quantity. Let's try 25. So it's 25 times 25 plus 250 is 275 versus 100 times 150. Let's divide both sides by 25. This becomes 4. Let's divide both sides by 25 again. This is a 6. And 250 has 1025. That I do know. So 275 must have 11. There you go. 11 is smaller than 24. 11 is smaller than 24. That tells us that W needs to be larger. A is too small. But I always like to start with C. Because if you start with A, in theory, you might end up trying four different times. But if you start with C, you only have to try twice. You only have to try twice. And the reason is this. The reason is this. If you try C, and if C works, you're done. If C works, you're done. If C doesn't work, it will tell you whether it's too large or too small. Like in our case, it told us that C was too large. If C is too large, you try B or A. It doesn't matter which one you try. If you try A, it works, it works. If A is too small, you know the answer is B. But if you, on the other end, if you try B and B is still too large, you know the answer is A. You will only have to try two times if you start in the middle. If you start from the top or the bottom, you, in theory, you will end up trying four different times. What number was this one? We, we took too much time on this problem. That, that, this problem took too much time. As I told you, some of them go fast and some of them are just... So we invested $8,000, it says, in 71 at 6%. Simple, simple interest. So we're going to make two investments. One is $8,000 at 6%. And the other one is $10,000 at 8% compounded semi-annually, semi-annually. So here we go. So the question simply is, how much interest did we earn? How much interest did we earn? So we have, we'll have 6% of 8,000 plus 8% 8 of 10,000. Watch what happens. Six percent of eight thousand is very straightforward. Six six is the forty-eight, so we're going to have four hundred eighty dollars, and eight percent of ten thousand is just eight hundred. Now, I understand. I understand. And I realize. I haven't forgotten. I understand that this eight hundred represents only the simple interest. It was supposed to be compounded semi-annually. In other words, we were supposed to take four percent for the first six months and then figure out how much money we have in the account and take another 4% of that amount. We could do all of that if it's necessary. Most of the time it is not necessary. Because now we know that simple interest adds up to 1200, 1280. This is a simple interest. That means the correct answer, whatever it is, where did it go my, my eraser thing right here? I'm going to erase this part. Correct answer, whatever it is, must be Let's put on the top here. What this tells us is that, that the, since this is 1280, therefore, since this is 1280, therefore, the total interest earned must equal something slightly more than 1280. Whatever the correct answer is, it's got to be just slightly more than 1280 before you invest any more time into it, before you do any more work into it. Take a quick look at the answer choices and cross out all the impossible answers we're looking for. It Obviously it has to be more than 1280, so anything that is less than that is not going to work. 
and we're looking for an answer choice that is slightly more than 1280. If it turns out that there are more than one answer choices, more than slightly more than 1280, then you have to invest the time, you have no choice, but here we don't, the answer is E. There is only one answer choice among the five, there is only one answer choice that they give us among the five that happens to be more than 1280, it has to be the answer, because 1280 represents just a simple interest. So that was the end of it. Tomorrow we'll meet again. Tomorrow we'll meet again and we'll pick up uh, from what we left off yesterday in data sufficiency problems. If you found this helpful and if you want to work with me, as I said before, send me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com and we'll see what we can do. Okay? Bye now.